Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Layer Cake, turn 32. Not turn 31. Why? Well, because I staled. So, a stale is what happens when you don't send in a turn in time. Um, and it just means that no orders are given and nothing happens. <clears throat> and basically you lose a turn. Which is a really bad thing in a game like this, but it's not... I mean, it's recoverable. Uh, it does mean I have to kind of go back over what happened last turn. I... it was... It, I, I made a really, really dumb mistake. I played the turn entirely, in its entirety, and I did everything that I meant to do, and then, pretty much, I wasn't quite finished. I shelved it, and I went on to something else, and I never... I never sent it in. I just flat, straight up, entirely forgot and failed to send the turn in. It was completely my fault. And as a result, I staled, and so now I've just lost a turn. So, the turn before that, my troops had inexplicably failed to storm the castle at Raga, so they are finally storming Raga two turns late. Uh, which upsets me in a different way, but they will they will take the fort there. They will take Raga, I'm quite confident. I'm sure Raga is vaguely surprised that this has not happened yet. I took Rotmarsh from, uh, from, I'm totally blanking out, Agartha. Uh, now I have, I have troops assembled, troops assembled, say that five times fast. I can't say words right now. It's late. I'm tired. I was rushing to try and get this done because I vaguely thought, I remembered that I hadn't sent in a turn and I was busy doing something else and then I came back and I was too late. So it's literally 10 minutes after the turn ticked over right now and I'm still kicking myself. Um, this turn, it looks like uh, Patala attacked me in Black Harbor. Uh, just a little probe with some mermen, I guess. They ran into my province defense and got kicked back out. So we're going to pump that up a little bit to make sure that happens again. Um, this little force here, we've got a commander here. So he's going to take these troops and Masari. And they are going to go see if they can take this province. Uh, without any gems, I think it's probably unlikely, to be honest. Masari should move up there as well. This army needs to patrol because I have a monster boar event happening in Lorboro. Uh, you can see Marignan has actually managed to free their capital, which is pretty cool. Um, Arcosafale was attacked by some dark vines there, which is sad for them. They are besieging Agartha at this point, so uh, Agartha is definitely on the way out, which is why I moved in here. Just to make sure I could kind of uh, get my piece of the pie. Uh, Takashi is still mutilated. I did heal Yoshi's uh, disease, so he's alive, just pretty worthless, to be honest. Uh, we are going to send some of our Ryujin down here to attack Patala, and we're going to send some of our Ryujin over here to help attack Agartha. Uh, now, all of these archers need to join the fight on land, while the shark warriors go under sea to support the Ryujin. So, what we want total here is... We want the shark warriors up front on hold and attack closest. Those guys are on fire archers. These guys are on fire archers. These guys are on fire archers. Mage-wise, we're summoning earth power, earth meld. This guy is spamming panic. That's all fine. Tetsuya is in here with the archers. Casting Mind Burn and then Panic will put him, like, kind of back here a little bit. Now, my Ryujin, what cool, good, great things can they be casting? They can be casting, this one can be casting Earth Spells if he wants. Alternatively, they can be casting Sailor's Death, which is an AoE 1, magic resistance negates, just armor negating damage spell. It's like Bone Melter, but it doesn't insta-kill, it just does armor negating damage. Uh, it doesn't affect people who can breathe water, but fortunately humans cannot breathe water. You can also cast Desiccation. I like Sailor's Death. Sailor's Death is a pretty good spell. Uh, Frozen Heart is similar, but it does less damage, only hits one person. 
The upside to it is it is not negatable. And of course I could cast Wave Warriors, which makes troops hard to hurt but lowers their strength. So I'm thinking I'm going to cast uh, Summon Earth Power first of all, and then I'm going to summon a Water Elemental because I can do that for free, and then I'm going to spam out Sailor's Death for a while from Masakata, and he'll be up here. Kenji will be up there, and Kenji will do a very similar script, except he's not going to be able to, um, what's the word that I'm trying to use? He can't um, summon Earth Power, of course, so instead he's going to cast, what's a good defensive spell? He's going to cast Liquid Body on himself, and then he will cast... Uh, he will summon a water elemental because he can do that for free and then he will spam bone melter and cast spells and i am going to give him some gems but i'm going to set him on uh, conservative magic gem usage so he doesn't use him and i'm going to give masakata no, i'm not going to give masakata any gems so he'll take those uh, kenji will take those gems with him and so he'll be able to use them to provide swarm support now, these three guys, I'm going to give three water gems each. Because they're going to be going under water. And in the water, you want to be able to cast water spells. I am sending Yoshi. Um, he's still good at doing things. He's just not... You know what I mean. He's still a mage. He's just not good at evocations because his precision is garbage. Uh, shockingly, he does still have a positive attack stat. That's really kind of surprising. But, so we've got these shark warriors up front. I'm actually going to split them into two squads, I think. So that we can cover a little bit more area with them. Now, underwater, of course, you do not have to worry about missile weapons. Um, I'm actually going to have you two change shape so that you can start in your uh, humanoid shape. And if you get injured, you will transform into um, your dragon shape. So underwater, you're going to summon water power. You're going to summon water elementals, which get regeneration. They get 20% regeneration underwater, so they're really, really good. And then you're going to spam out... Let me see... Uh, Sailor's Death and Curse of the Desert don't work underwater, unfortunately. You could spam Frozen Heart. That's a real simple one. Or you could spam Numbness, which is an excellent little debuff. Let's do Numbness. And we are just going to apply that script to everyone. For this first battle, they shouldn't need to be spending gems. So we're going to keep them on conservative magic gem usage, as you can see. That way they'll only use their free gem to summon those water elementals. And we should be able to take that province easily. If there's a fort here, then our progress will be slower. But we will still make progress. And we're going to spend all the rest of our gold recruiting shark warriors. I want to build a, a lab here because I'm about to get a palisade built. But it's going to have to wait. Given that I lost that turn, I was that was one of my orders for last turn, was building a lab here. But this turn, we're paying for our new set of Ryujin, so we can't really afford that. Uh, let's make sure everyone is set to research, which they should be, but aren't. Um, I've got Rintaro, this heir too, now. I think I mentioned that in the last video, so he should be able to do something or other. Um, Masari... Actually, I kind of want to dive underwater with Masari immediately, too. Hmm. But I also want to hit Grey Mercs. Masari needs gems. Let's move Masari back to get some gems before we do anything. And uh, Zerfik, Zerfiric should move up this way. He can't reach that place in one turn. Okay. You need to search for magic sites. You need to search for magic sites. That's why I had you out here to search for air magic sites. You're searching. You're searching. Uh, I need more air income because it's only three per month, and I have the technical capability to cast uh, Summon Daitengu at the moment, I just don't have the gems to do so. Uh, as you can see also my scouts have not been moved because I 
Staled. I hate staling. It's so irritating. It, it's not honestly a huge deal, usually, unless it's a one particular really, really important turn. But, and in a way, I mean, this is fine. It just, I was already move. I was still moving troops up, but it just, it delays you. It takes up time. And time is always, always, always of the essence in games like this. I am actually going to not recruit you. I'm actually going to going to cancel mage recruitment entirely in some of my forts here. I'm still recruiting Ryujin, so I'm still getting the important mages. And I want to pump out as many crossbows as possible right here. Okay, so that leaves me 115 gold so I can afford a regular Shugenja. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm recruiting fewer mages than I could. I'm losing out on two mages, and I'm recruiting weaker mages in a lot of my other forts, but I have quite a few mages, to be honest, and I just need more money. Um, my Ryujin contingent is pretty strong at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, and a half. Yeah. Uh, also, Norhisi is not blood hunting, and he should be. Eventually, if nothing else, well, I can't because his magic skills are zero. I was about to say, eventually, if nothing else, I can empower Takashi in blood and blood feast to get rid of his afflictions, but I can't do that because since he's feeble minded and headless, he can't, um, can't do that. I forget if there's an item that you can use to give somebody recuperation. Anyway, I'll worry about that some other time. We're just blood hunting over here, just blood hunting away. I am going to give... I should, I need to put an independent commander there to help patrol. Uh, these scouts need to go where? I have pretty good scout coverage at this point, to be honest. Independents have been beating everybody up. There's independents there, there, there. Independents have been taking a lot of provinces. Also, there was a, an event in Jomon? Magical gems, bad omens. Why is there a why is there why are there crossed swords there? I don't know what that's all about, but I do know that Mikio should be researching right now. Ah, uh, research, still solid. Um could be better, could be worse. I feel like it's in an okay place. Possibly a little bit slow for this this point in the game, but that's because I'm I'm starting to have trouble recruiting mages. Starting to have trouble keeping up. Once I hit construction level 6, I'll be able to turn some of my fire gems into lightless lanterns, which will help. And of course, I'm committing a whole lot of mages to fighting right now. Not an unreasonable number, but a number. A fairly significant number. We're going to patrol for one turn here, see if we can find that monster boar. And then we are going to move into combat. Um, Hidekaze here is actually going to take my 10 nature gems that I have, and he's going to move up to join this army and pass them out to the various uh, Master Shugenjas so that he can take them into combat against Patala. Actually, that's a bad plan. That's a bad plan because that army is weak. So instead, instead, these guys are just going to patrol for now. And, uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit worried about them finding that monster boar. Like, I'm a little bit worried it might just outright kill them. Uh, yeah, Armor of Achilles is not going to help in this situation. But, uh, Earthmeld might. Here we go. You can't even summon Earth Power because you're worthless. Just, uh, just like cast regular old spells. Let me have you search for magic sites because nobody searched for water here. Okay. So we're searching for air sites. We're searching a lot of places for a lot of things, honestly. Um, doing lots of research. Attacking Agartha there. Attacking Patala there. Uh, we will be attacking Patala there as well. Actually, what I should do is I should give him those nature gems like I was talking about, but instead of pushing this way, 
Oh, that's right. He's old and slow. He has map move 16. He can't cross two forests. Shoot. That sucks. Okay, yeah, we'll just have him Masari fly back to get the gems. That's fine. Um, you and you will move over there to join this little force. I'll recruit two archers to add to it, just to mix in with the samurai archers. And then we'll go take gray marks. And after that, possibly my Ryujin will go underwater into the storms. So, that is going to be turn 32. Once again, sorry about missing turn 31. Um, I... I'm as frustrated by it as you are, I promise. It's extremely frustrating to stale like that. But, uh, it was totally my fault, and nobody else could have saved me from myself. Maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe if somebody was being my minder, but can't ask that of anybody. So, I will see you all in the next episode, turn 33. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Layer Cake turn 33. This is about halfway through the turn. Um, I have not finalized my moves yet, but I want to start recording now just because I'm kind of thinking out loud. Um, so, this turn, I finally, finally took Raga. And we can watch that battle, but to be honest, it was a little bit anticlimactic. Uh, I have my fairly large army out here. At inside, there's not much at all. He's got his one Turin Sorcerer left, he has one Doster, and then he has his god, who is Graven Image of the Golden Idol, uh, who is a rainbow with high blood, no gems. The only thing he's really got going for him is high protection and damage resistance, plus a lot of resistance to all elements. So, you know, there's that. But he's not, all he can do is cast spells. He can't cast spells very well, though. He's got his Area Archer Province Defense up on the walls. And so, uh, lots of arrows exchange. Uh, my mages pretty much buff themselves up right off the bat. They're out of gems, so they are not... They're casting troop buffs and stuff like that. They're not in much danger from these arrows. Uh, lots and lots of undead spam coming out, but my full-size water elementals with their four high damage crushing attacks are really pretty good at clearing undead. So, those water elementals are going in. My uh, Ryujins are buffing themselves up as well since they've gone off script. This guy has quickened himself for reasons largely unknown. Uh, and basically my troops just kind of clear the field. I mean, it's not, it's not very subtle, it's not very complicated, there's just not a whole lot that can stop them. Uh, honestly, I think I take more casualties here from my own friendly fire than anything else. And Graven Image just gets worn down being surrounded by water elementals and shark warriors and stuff. Uh, some of them do get paralyzed because of the spells he's throwing, but eventually it's all over but the cry. And my crossbowmen close into close range, start pummeling him with bolts, and he is stunning everyone around him because he's got that astral shield that paralyzes people that attack him, but it doesn't always work on people with long weapons and it doesn't work at all on crossbows, so there he goes. A uh, few people got set on fire. So, Casualty-wise, uh, I lost a number. I lost 43 guys, all told, to the Skele Spam, and a lot of it, I think, uh, some fraction of it was to my own friendly fire, like those crossbows. Some of those kills were on my own guys. I also lost 13 crossbowmen somehow. I'm not sure exactly how that happened. Probably archer fire. Um, their protection is okay, but it ain't great. But, cheap at the price, I have captured the Fortress of Raga. I also took White Lake. I did lose one Shark Warrior in the process. But once again, fairly simple. All my Ryujin summoned water power. Then they all uh, buffed up because they're not spending gems on this little province defense. Uh, the Shark Warriors went in, wiped everybody out, backed up by the Numbness spam and some Frozen Hearts. And then this guy, because they were using Coral Spears and they hit him a few times, he dies to the poison damage. Just barely dies to it. Um, He got slightly unlucky. He took a pretty hard hit with the Coral Spear, 8 points there, and then he took 26 points of damage from Weak Poison. And to be honest, I'm not sure how this adds up to 26, but uh, in any case, he ended up with a lot of poison, and so he um, so he died to that, which is fine. Uh, shark Warriors die sometimes. So we've taken White Lake, 
Uh, in Rotmarsh, we are losing Dominion to a Preacher. We got extra province defense in the Mountains of Evernight, which is nice. And in Utenshire, we lost people but gained Dominion, which is, I don't really care about Utenshire all that much. So, overall, things are going pretty well. I've got more crossbows over here. I should move a commander to pick them up if I had any commanders. Um, this turn, Arquisafale told me he's ending our non-aggression pact. So, uh, we are going to have a problem there in a few turns. In three turns, we'll be free to attack each other. He's built quite a few temples, to be honest. Uh, my dominion is spreading, but not terribly fast, because I haven't been building temples recently since I got my god back. I should build one more temple at some point, but I'm really pretty short of money right now. I'm actually going to stop recruiting shark warriors there, because I need the cash. I've got nine shark warriors up there, two down there. I don't need them so much on this side, but I would like to keep recruiting them up there. So, because Arquisafale might be going to war with me pretty soon, what that means is I need Onmyoji. And I need Omiyoji for two reasons. First of all, um, they're good forgers, and I definitely need to get to the point where I can forge a few key boosters that Astral Magic can give me. Also, they have Astral Magic. They're Astral 2, and having an Astral 2 ma mage in a province makes that province nearly immune to the spell Mind Hunt, which otherwise Astral Mages will tend to slam you with, and it gets to be a real, real problem. So... On top of that, of course, I am now fighting Patala. I just took White Lake, uh, including with Yoshi, the crippled and pain in pain. Um, I could honestly split these forces up to take both of these provinces, I'm pretty sure, because 40 Triton Troopers I don't think can stop four Ryujin spamming out Water Elementals followed by Numbness. But I'm going to keep the armies together. And I'm going to send them all down that way to try and take out the faraway sea. We're going to recruit a few little more province defense in here. And we're going to recruit a Triton commander, I guess. Uh, yeah, we're going to recruit a Triton commander. Just one. And we will um, we'll get a fort set up. Uh, this isn't a great place for a fort. It's not bad. But resource-wise, it's very, very low. And I would like to have really high resources. Like, these two provinces have pretty, pretty dang solid resources. So maybe I build a fort in both of those two provinces or something. In any case, it's not like I have the money to support multiple provinces recruiting Ryujin anyway, because I have very, very little money right now. Especially because uh, Raga burned down the lab in this fort before I took it. So I don't actually have a lab here, and having a lab here is essential. Both because... Well, mainly because... I'm at war with Raga. I mean, at war with Patala. And I, this army, this army is going to be cruising in on me, like, really, really quick. Uh, Kinmasa needs to move. These guys also probably need to move. But most importantly, I need gems. I need to give gems to mages in order that, so that they can use them to fight. And in order to do that, I mean, this army is 280 units, mainly crossbows. So they've got a lot of archery power in here. They've got 17 war elephants. And then they also have a bunch of random monkey infantry. Now, there are some spells that totally screw over monkeys. Um, in particular, I think it's in Thaumaturgy. It's a nature spell. Beast Mastery at level 8. You have to be a level 6 nature mage. But it, um, it enslaves all animals. It, now, its magic resistance negates easily. But still, against monkey nations, it enslaves a significant portion of their army. Uh, wildness can also help to an extent. Uh, I would like to get... Mm, not Ravenous Swarm. Charm Animal wouldn't be bad either. But in any case, uh, I'm researching up to construction level 6, which will only take me a couple more turns. That will get me high-level magic items. In particular, it will get me water bracelets, which I can then use to start summoning... Um, green lions and such. I have a decent grip of troops here because I have been summoning uh, fire ants. Unfortunately, I don't, what I don't have is much to do with those fire ants. Now, what I need is 
I need to be summoning Tengu. Unfortunately, that costs air gems, and of course, air gems are sort of at a premium for me because my air income is garbage. Um, hmm. So that has a reasonable amount of province defense. These guys are going to be casting wooden warriors. So I would like you all to hold an attack closest. I would like you all to fire at enemy archers. And you can be back down there. And I'd like you two mages to be right here. Strength of Gaia. You can't cast Strength of Gaia because you don't have enough nature magic. So you can cast Iron Skin instead. And then you can also cast Wooden Warriors like twice. And then after that, start throwing... Um, what? Mm, nah, just keep keep throwing wooden warriors, I guess. It's not like you have anything better to do, really. So you two be up with the infantry. You be standing right there. Archers be kind of in the back. So these guys are going to go take uh, Grey Mercs away. These mermen might come up to contest it. I have, I have stacked 20 province defense on Black Harbor in an effort to prevent these mermen from coming and taking it. 20 province defense can absolutely waste those mermen, I'm pretty sure. Because the province defense here is crossbowmen and heavy cavalry. This army was patrolling because there was a monster boar in Loreboro. They found it and killed it. I lost four of my province defense militia. They don't have any gems, once again, which they need. So these three guys are moving up to support them. And this army might come in at them. Uh, it's a bigger and tougher army than I have. But... Uh, to be honest, the main problem is just lack of infantry. Um, I do not have much by way of infantry, but these guys, I don't need you spe casting Iron Warriors for sure. Iron Skin, don't bother tempering flesh, just summon Earth Power and then Earth Meld. Because you're going to need to be basically holding troops back. Uh, I need the... Um, I need the Minotaurs not to reach me. So mainly Minotaurs and Crossbowmen. So it does have crossbows. So these guys are all scripted to just freaking swarm the crap out of the enemy. So if Pangea... I'm sorry, I keep saying other nations instead of Patala, and I don't know why I'm doing that. It's weird. Um, if Patala moves in, they are going to find... Uh, basically, these mages are all going to spam Iron Warriors, except Rintaro, who is worthless and weak. I've got these guys scattered around in the back to attract, to draw attack rear orders. And these three are all just going to swarm like their lives depend on it, which they really pretty much do. They absolutely do. So they're going to spam out swarm and then a couple of other spells. Um, you actually might as well summon your water elemental at that point. And so hopefully the bugs, especially in combination with earth meld, the bugs should cause some problems. Now, Minotaurs normally are not very good troops, but against bugs, they may actually work. So what I might want to do is... I might want to fall back to my fortress and then counterattack once they attack Lorboro. Because I have more crossbows there. I actually don't need crossbows right now. What I need are infantry. Uh, Ashigaru just to hold the line... Akaoni Samurai are not going to be significantly more survivable against the crossbows, but they will hurt the Minotaurs more. They have a much higher defense skill. How many could I get? Ugh, not many. Well, let's do a mix. Yeah, okay. So, um, we're recruiting some Onmyoji. I'm still not full mage recruitment, but we're recruiting an Onmyoji there an Onmyoji in the capital, and an Onmyoji over here in Kamiya. We are besieging this fort in Underspring. Uh, we tried to assassinate a Gate Lord and failed. Our ninja was defeated. Gate Lords are pretty tough. So you can see he's got okay defense skill and, more importantly, very high protection. Um, I needed to bring some way to actually hurt him because... Basically, this guy just threw some shurikens, and then they went into melee, and he ran. After he took a hit, having done no damage. And it gave him battle fright, which doesn't help. But his damage was not high enough to really deal with the Gate Lord. I was hoping I would catch a mage. Uh, in any case, 
lost that, but I did take out the province defense, quite heavy province defense. This is like 24 points of province defense. I lost four Akaomi Samurai taking it. Uh, you can see here, my mages are all dropping spells. I'm casting Mind Burn on some people. And then we're dropping Wooden Warriors and some Water Elementals. Now uh, the Akaoni Samurai went in first. You can see those two guys got wiped out. But then the Water Elemental comes in. Uh, the Agarth and Infantry are moving past, but my Archers in the back are doing pretty solid work. Especially with these Shark Warriors who are up to Protection 24. Uh, the crossbowmen and the samurai archers get engaged by these Agarthan infantry, but they rout just as they reach me from a point-blank volley of missiles. And at that point, we're just plowing through them. All the enemies are routed, and it's cleanup duty at this point. So, that went fine. Uh, Raga's been permanently vanquished, of course. Uh, I killed that monster boar. I lost a scout in Ozandius. Why do scouts keep dying in Ozandius? It's because I'm doing this thing where I just give them orders to move to provinces far away and let them path by themselves. And when I do that, they like to path through Ozandius. They like to, like, especially from here, if I order them anywhere over in this direction, they'll move down and then try to move through Ozandius, and they'll get caught. So I need to, I guess, pay a little bit more attention to that, but to be honest, life is too short to be, uh, to be pathing scouts manually. That's how I feel about it. Uh, Norihisa has a Sanguine Dowsing Rod, and he's still not finding, um, many slaves, which is really kind of unfortunate. Um, I don't really want to commit my Air Gems to summoning Tengu right at the moment, since I get so few of them. I would really like to save up to summon a Dai Tengu. It's gonna take another 30 divided by 4. It's gonna take another 8, 9 turns before I can do that. Yeah, it's going to take nine turns, which is really all sorts of unfortunate. Um, I desperately need to keep moving around searching for air sites. Which is, of course, a little bit dangerous in wartime. But uh, we do what we can. Or we do what we must because we can. Kinmasa needs to run. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I'm wondering now is... Can I realistically hold Dragon Scale Mountains? I can't stop this army from busting down the walls. If they move to Dragon Scale Mountains, they are going to destroy the walls. So, the question then becomes, I have, if we look at my the battle report in Braga, right now I have 165 units here, of which about 90 are crossbows. And then I have 24 Shark Warriors, 23 Samurai Archers, uh, some of my units did retreat, but they retreated to the fort in Raga. So that's fine. I do have significant magic power. I have six Ryujin, two Shugenjas, five Master Shugenjas. And, of course, the Son of the Dragon King. The issue is none of them have any gems, and I can't give them any gems because, well, I, take, I, take, I tell a lie, Akihiro has a gem. And I can't give them any gems because I can't... There's no lab here. Now, they can reach Dragon Scale Mountains in one turn. The troops cannot all reach Dragon Scale Mountains in one turn, but the mages can. So, if I move to Dragon Scale Mountains and he comes to besiege Dragon Scale Mountains, I think as long as I have a lab here, I can hold. I'll have 12 nature gems next turn, plus a bunch of water gems. Um, I can summon some Tengu, which will help. So the question really is, and if I if I if I really was worried about it, I could move up 13 Shark Warriors, and plus I can move these guys in to help with a with a siege fight because they can fly there from here. So I'm going to take this province. If he besieges Dragon Scale Mountains, I can do that. But but I have to build a lab, and building a lab means I'm going to have to cut some recruitment. Uh, like a lot of recruitment. My recruitment is already cut pretty much to the bone. In order to get a lab, I'm going to have to cut at least three mages or all my shark warriors. I don't want to cut him unless I'm sure. Um, yeah, let's do it. I think. And I'm going to build the lab here instead of Raga, just because building the lab here is where he's like liable to attack me immediately. 
So I'm already recruiting nothing there. I'm recruiting a Master Shigenja here. We're going to cut him. That gives us 300. I need 500 for a lab, so I need to cut another 200 gold. Is anywhere recruiting any troops? I think I'm, at this point, not recruiting any troops anywhere. I'm not going to cut the Ryujins. It wouldn't help, actually, because, they, I mean, I would get the money back from them, but I'm already going to get them next turn, so it would be actually a bigger blow. I'll cut that on Miyoji, and I'll cut that on Miyoji. That gives me 592. So now you can build a lab. And you can, with 92 gold, I still can't recruit a Shugenja. So, I think at this point I'm recruiting one mage this turn. And that's a little bit scary. Like, uh, that's bad. Recruiting that few mages is bad. Uh, Underspring is not going down quickly. The walls are lightly damaged and more time is required to break them down. I think that means that I'm only beating his siege defense by like 40 or maybe 50. Now I have these uh, fire ants which give me two siege strength each. Uh, let's move Kentoki up there as well. And Fusamasa. Yeah, let's move them two up there. And Takashi, why not? He can he can still be set to attack rear. Uh, my research is doing okay. 705, not bad. Um, at this point, I may want to delay construction by a turn or two. I could hit... Ravenous Swarm won't help. Charm Animal could potentially help because it would let me charm his elephants with my nature mages. So I could drop swarm a couple of times and then charm the animals, and his elephants have very, very low magic resistance. That is indeed an interesting thought. Um, other research options. I'm kind of looking at what I could get next turn. 700 research points is enough to hit evocation level 3 in one round. That would give me fireballs, acid bolts, freezing mist, magma bolts, magic duel, healing light. It would give me some options. Actually, I think it's enough to hit four, because 50, 100, that's 150, that's 200, 350, 400, and it takes 750 to hit four, I think. Which is too bad, because having Acid Rain would be nice. Do I actually have any Ryujin who can Acid Rain? Yeah, Akihiro can Acid Rain, Yoshi and Kinao can Acid Rain. Plus I'm recruiting two more, so I don't know what they could do. Ooh. Could I get up to 750 research somehow? I don't have any items. How do I get up to 750 research? Well, first of all, I fall back, except you sneak. Then you three, if you research, that gives me 750. And actually, it's not 750 I need, it's only 721, I think. So, you're 16, you're 15, you're 14. So if I hit evocation level 4 this turn, it won't give me Thunderstrike because I don't have any air 3 mages. I mean, I could spend air gems on it, but eh. it will give me Acid Rain. It will also give me Blade Wind, which could be a good anti-crossbow spell. And it will get closer to Falling Frost, Gifts from Heaven and potentially Stellar Cascades. Yeah, I mean, with Ryujin and Onmyoji on the field, Evocation becomes a much more powerful school. Uh, other option, I could hit Enchantment Level 4. Enchantment Level 4 would give me Flaming Arrows. It would also give me some Nature Spells and Strength of Giants. 
My biggest issue in fighting Patala's army is going to be dealing with the crossbows, because he has crossbows with flaming arrows, which makes them quite damaging. It also means that Wooden Warriors is not effective, because the fire damage, the extra weakness to fire damage, will hurt me just as much as the uh, bark skin helps me, if not more so, because it will make me more vulnerable to my troops being set on fire. And he has a good deal more crossbows than I do, because his army is about twice the size of mine. So, uh, I mean, I've got crossbows and fire ants and stuff there. We're going to give ants to people. We're also going to give crossbows to people to take with them. I have Weeaboo Meme Lord who is really, really high earth magic, so he can ma he can cast Maws of the Earth like you wouldn't believe. Of course, that also costs gems. I'm going to recruit an independent... I'm, in fact, I'm going to set this place to recruit independent commanders on repeat, because I constantly find myself wanting them. Rotmarsh needs some defenses, which I forgot to put in last turn. This is the Throne of Law, which increases order. Uh, that would be kind of nice for me, but I'm not too worried about it right at the moment. This Siege Force is kind of just holding here. Uh, that's 30 Hoplites. That's a significant man army that I don't want to tango with, so I'm going to stay up here for now. Uh, Kenji is going to, while I'm thinking about it, Kenji is going to pass out these gems so that I can swarm more effectively. Because right now he's just scripted to Liquid Body, Water Elemental, and then Bone Melter. Uh, when you should be casting... Well, actually, actually, do we have a... We have an, uh, a three, don't we? Yeah, Ryotaro is a three. So give Ryotaro another gem. And Ryotaro can cast Strength of Gaia and then Howl. Which will help. You can Liquid Body Summon Water Elemental, uh, Swarm. Where's Swarm? There's Swarm. And then start throwing Bone Melter. You can clear this script out. You're going to Swarm twice... And then, uh, you can either panic or paralyze. Mind burn's an okay spell, but it's single target. Why don't you panic to lower enemy leadership straight away? And then you're howling. Okay, so we'll get a few swarms on the field to help our troops. You are dropping legions of steel on them to buff their prot. You are casting Sailor's Death, which is a nice spell. You are staying behind. You are firing at enemy archers. You are firing at enemy archers, as are you. Great. Okay. So, the research question. Back to that. Going up blood magic won't help me, because I only have one blood mage, and he is a little bit busy. I need to hit 50 gems. Once I hit 50 gems, I'll empower somebody else to help blood hunt, like Masatsura, one of these guys probably, because I won't miss their research as much. Um, I could also hit Thaumaturgy. I looked at Thaumaturgy already. I could hit Thaumaturgy 5. Thaumaturgy 5 would give me Soul Slay. So it's Thaumaturgy 5 or Evocation or Enchantment 4 are my options. Enchantment 4 would give me Flaming Arrows to counteract his Flaming Arrows. Now his Flaming Arrows is still going to do more damage, but having the option to Flaming Arrows would be pretty good, and also having the option to cast Terracotta Army might be helpful. Plus, it would give me Strength of Giants and Claymen summons on the way up. Although, I will probably never spend Water Gems on Claymen. I have better things to spend Water Gems on. Alternatively, Acid Rain and Bleed Wind. 
Blade Wind is going to be a little bit trickier for me to pull off. Uh, I have I have I have enough Earth twos and threes here to cast it. But in terms of AOE damage, that was the wrong button. In terms of AOE damage, I already have Maws of the Earth. Which requires a gem, but is honestly better than any of those. I also have Iron Pigs. I've never cast Iron Pegs. Pigs. I've got to try it at some point. Iron Pegs. Um, I've got Battle Fortune. It requires a pearl. It's AoE 5, but it gives you luck. Uh, uh, uh. Wave Warriors would be a good way to counteract crossbows to an extent. Getting up to level 7 for Marble Warriors would and Mass Protection would also be pretty fantastic, but it's not going to happen. It's going to take several turns. I'm going to go Enchantment 4. And then I'll hit Construction 6. And then... At some point here, I am going to take a turn out to grab Evocation like 5 for Gifts of Heaven. Uh, possibly even 6 for Magma Eruption. Uh, I'm never going to really be able to cast Magma Eruption easily. I mean, there's lots of high-level evocation spells that would be kind of cool, but... Maelstrom would also be a great spell. And my Ryujin can boost up to cast it pretty simply. We'll go with that for right now. We'll get enchantment up. Um, I definitely need... I need more... I need more Merman Captains is what I need. After this Ryujin, I'm going to take a break to recruit a pair of Mermen Captains here, or possibly a pair of Crab Generals. Uh, yeah, a pair of Crab Generals, I think. Just because they're tougher, and I like them. They're cute. I enjoy Crab Generals. So we'll do that. Um, and we're getting our Shark Warriors up here. It's going to be a few turns before we can get them out anywhere. Okay, I think that's going to be the turn. So we're taking that from Patala. I'm anticipating a Counter-Stroke here. I'm building a lab. We have Boomy. I can't cast any spells here right now. At some point soon here, I want to make a Dwarven Hammer. Um, which is going to take an Earth Mage, obviously. These guys are all researching. Let's actually put these gems back in storage for now, since we're not using them immediately. Uh, in terms of gem income, I feel like I'm doing alright, but I just need it to be more focused, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, 9, 11, 13, 17, 21, 26 gems per turn. Uh, uh, my ideal, and I don't know if this is realistic, like, if you're a, a veteran player watching this, correct me on this, but my ideal is to have at least as much gem income as the turn by, like, the mid-game, by, like, the end of year two, which I'm not hitting at the moment because I've been a little bit dilatory on my site searching. What I need to do is I need to get mages filtered out into these areas to site search, but right now can't afford to do that because Patala is about to come in with that big hunk of hunk of burning monkeys and uh, and ruin my day. Uh, Arcos Fale is still besieging Agartha's forts. They're also moving these troops to take the rest of Agartha's provinces. That's fine. I'm going to let them do that. I don't want to tussle with them at the same time as I'm tussling with Patala at the moment. So we'll just kind of see what the future brings. Um, I do need to get more troops over here to help with the siege. I'd like to move these uh, these crossbows over. Don't have a whole lot of leadership. Um, but let's send over... A, uh, I can't send over more mages because I need that research. Yeah, I just need more commanders, man. I am literally just running out of commanders. Uh, 38 resources. This place can recruit indie commanders, can't it? Yeah, it can. We're actually going to stop recruiting scouts, which normally I don't like to do, but I have quite a few scouts, honestly. Oh, God, this place has terrible resources, too. Can you recruit independent commanders? You can recruit mounted commanders. Okay, recruit mount. start recruiting mounted commanders instead of scouts, please. Uh, I can also recruit Woodhinge Druids here, but I'm not too worried about it. So, we're going to start recruiting commanders there and there. That will be a little bit more expenditure, but I just need commanders to lead people around because right now it's ugh, it's bad, man. I'm not able to take my guys' places. <sighs> but 
We're getting more into the water. We're going to take those three water provinces. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. May have to pause, of course, to go move back to defend Dragon Scale Mountains. But I think with all these troops, plus these troops, plus all my mages, which I can get in there, I think I'll be able to hold it. Um, shouldn't be too bad. Now, in terms of, of mages and commanders, Ryutaro... Uh, who is slowing you down? Oh, the, the Shark Warriors. Their map move 8 because of their armor penalty. Yeah, that heavy armor, though. Okay. Those guys, the crossbows are map move 10. Yeah, so it's those and Ophagion. And Makoto. And Zerferic. It's basically all my troops are not going to be there next turn, so it's going to be entirely mages inside the fort. That is honestly a little concerning. Um, new plan. New plan. We are going to move there. These guys are going to research. Takashi is going to stand there. Uh, Master Bader here is still going to build the lab, and Visik is still going to keep trying to upgrade the fortress. But Weeaboo Meme Lord is also going to move out. I can't do that. I need gems. I have to have gems for this to work. I'm worried. What I'm worried about here is movement rules, because what I anticipate is this army is going to move down here. They will break the gates of Dragonscale Mountain's fort in one turn. Then, I'm going to be moving troops in, because my army cannot reach that province in one turn. So, what I'm concerned about is that they are going to take the fort before I can move in to attack them. I think, actually, I'll get to fight them outside the fort first. But I won't have gems. Dangerous. Okay, so I need gems. Yes, so since this will be a friendly province, I should be able to move in and attack them before they storm the fort. And there'll be a battle outside. If I sally with who's inside the fort, they will also fight. So I do need to do this. And all of my... Yeah, I need to do that so that all of my Ryujin will be inside the fort where they can pick up gems. Okay, that's the way to play it. Also, all of you guys, I want you to change shape, please. Okay, there you go. Great. So we'll have all our mages here. We'll defeat that army coming from Florian, I think. Uh, we should have enough magical support. I mean, this is this is a, a reasonably heavy mage contingent. Uh, it's not like the greatest that's ever been seen in the world, but it's it's a fairly heavy grip of mages, especially with these guys coming in and uh, with my pretender god there as well. That will definitely help because we have Meme Lord may be cursed, but he's also prop thirty one before he even casts any buffs on himself, and he can be. He can be buffed pretty hardcore. So, I will... Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um... Where's the Nature 2 guy? I will forge a Ring of Regeneration to give him. And that way, he'll be regenerating 25 hit points per turn. And that, on top of Protection 31, on top of Magic Resistance 19, which I can buff further because I do have Thaumaturgy level 4, so I can cast Iron Will. Uh, add all that up, and I think he's going to be nearly impossible to stop. Like, I don't think they have anything that could kill him. He can't be trampled. Infantry can beat on him pretty much all they want. Crossbows shooting at him... 
Crossbows shooting at him will still be able to inflict chip damage, but I don't think they'll be able to get through the regen because Protection 31, cast Iron Skin, that boosted up to 34. Um, protection 34, so that would be 17 minus 20% of 17 is still like 13 or 14. And crossbows do uh, 11 damage. So his prot is still higher than the damage, which means on average they're not hurting him much, if at all. And then he's regenerating 25 hit points around. So he'll regenerate, basically, for every time the crossbows fire, he will regenerate 50 hit points. So they would have to do 50 hit points or more of damage every time they hit him in order to actually kill him. Also, since he's Earth-6, he'll be able to cast Maws of the Earth and similar spells uh, really, really hard and very often. So as long as I have a lab here and I give him Earth Gems, he's going to be a huge asset. Now, he is cursed, so he's more he has double the chance to get Afflictions. But... I'll drop Temper Flesh on him as well, so he'll be taking half damage. So, he's going to be a tank. He's going to be extremely tanky. Uh, you're summoning Fire Ants. Uh, while we're doing this, now research-wise, I'm at 700, 735. I think 735 is enough. Is there anybody else I can set to research? No, I'm at 735 because I turned that guy to forging a ring. Um, okay. Because I would really like to summon a few things right now. I'd really like to summon, I mean, I, I would really like to, let's be honest, to spend my, my air gem summoning Tengu. Because I could summon one, two, three, four. I could spend all my air gems right now summoning Tengu. Which would get me 20. And 20 Tengu would not be an inconsiderable force here. They would distract the crossbows, which is what I need them for. Um, spending 20 air gems to distract crossbows, well, you make the call on how valuable that really is, but... Well, Swarm will do the same thing. Spamming out Swarm will also distract the crossbows with flying bugs, so... Okay, we're set. We're gonna stay, we're gonna stick with this. Um... Yeah, 735 should be enough to get me up. 50, 100, 200, 400 is how it should should go. Okay. All right, so that's going to be the turn. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in turn 34.